Okay, I'm not I'm not hearing Rebecca, so I'm going to assume that that we've started recording. We're going to start the meeting. So, um, okay, and um, Rebecca, do you have a current list of all of our members? If you could do the roll call, that would be a big help, please. Here. 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 I'm here. 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 Michelle Berg. I see you, Michelle. Thank you. I'm here. I'm dealing with a naughty puppy outside. So. Mike Pisani. Here. Monique, Mo Monique Mobley. Here I am. Thank you. Naya Vang. Here. Pamela Potter. Here. Paul Whitley. Here. Gina Pagel. Here. Sam Kaufman. Here. Stephanie Shef Shefchuk. Here. I know Tim Schell is here and Allison Voller. Here. Is there is there anyone I missed? I believe we're good then. Okay, thank you so much, Rebecca. I think I think we're we're good. Thank you for your assistance. Um, so our next item on the agenda, uh, item three, is approval of minutes. And and again, I do want to apologize. We did not have these in the meeting folder uh, initially. You would have had to have self served uh, through board book. Uh, and so Diane very kindly uh, linked uh, to our minutes from board book. So. I guess my first question is, does anybody have any reservations if we just take a minute or two, review the minutes uh, that Diane placed in the chat, uh, and then we will move to an approval of the minutes. So let's just take two minutes to review those and we will move to approval at 610.
Okay, does anybody need any more time? Feel free to raise your hand if you do, either your physical hand or your Zoom hand. And scanning my squares, I don't see any hand. So um, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting? I'll move. Okay, Diane moves. I'll start second. Second, thank you, Sam. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Say nay. Okay, very well. Uh, next item on the agenda is to approve our agenda. Uh, has everybody had a chance to see that? Okay. Um, so I need a motion to approve the agenda as posted. So move, Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. And a second? A second. Very good. Was that you, Paul? That was me, yes. Okay, very good. We have a, uh, a motion and a second to approve the agendas posted. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Very good. So the first information item on the agenda is uh, a presentation uh, by me with uh, just an overview of it's posted as overview of our, our curriculum uh, in the area of diversity and inclusion. And uh, Sam had requested this uh, be on the agenda. And uh, I exchanged some email with Sam. And if I get this wrong, Sam, I, I can trust you, I know, to, to guide me back to the path. Uh, but uh, Sam's question, I think, was looking for some more information on what we uh, have forthcoming in terms of the work on our social studies curriculum in the district. Uh, and so is that the case, Sam? Yep, you hit the nail right on that. Very good. Well, it helped because you teed it up for me. So thank you for that. So I put a PDF in the meeting folder, but I'm going to share my screen now. And I'm going to bring up my slide deck, which is right here. And I'm going to go back up to the top. And we'll just do a little presentation here. So again, uh, this amplifies what I had put in the meeting agenda last time, which was kind of a broader look uh, at kind of what we had done and where we were going. This is specifically on what we're calling the Nehemiah Partnership. And uh, this is one of a few major partnerships that we have in place this year. We're part of a county level equity consortium of schools. It's actually expanded beyond Dane County now. We have, uh, my understanding is 26 districts involved in the DCEC now. We have our work with the National Equity Project, uh, which is uh, mainly a staff and we're getting some students onto this team as well. We have the Nehemiah Partnership, which uh, we're going to learn a little bit more in the next few minutes. And then we have an application into an organization called the Minority Student Achievement Network or MSAN. And our application is in. Uh, their committee that reviews applications for the year is meeting next month. So hopefully within the next four to six weeks, we hear uh, if we have been accepted into membership in MSAN. Uh, so these are some of the external partnerships we have going on this year. And uh, this is just a deeper dive into what we're doing with Nehemiah, which is going to really look at our social studies uh, curriculum and customizing what we have in our local curriculum to uh, be more representative, inclusive, and show more agency. And so uh, the Nehemiah Center uh, for Urban Leadership Development is a Dane County nonprofit. Uh, they are involved in many uh, positive projects in the greater Madison community. One of the projects that Nehemiah sponsors is an evening course on African American history. Uh, and this is a course that's open to the community. It typically runs in the winter into early spring on Monday nights. It's a fairly significant evening time commitment. 
Uh, many people in Dane County have had the opportunity to take it. Uh, its, its reputation is excellent. I have not had the chance to participate in it myself because it meets each Monday and we have a lot of board meetings on Monday nights. Uh, but this last year we did have one of our social studies teachers uh, participate in the course. She came away uh, with extremely positive reviews. And at the same time, I had an opportunity uh, to catch up with one of the Nehemiah uh, leaders uh, at a Dane County Equity Consortium meeting. And we talked about ways, uh, I had kind of lamented that because it was in the evening, we weren't always able to get teachers into it because of scheduling. And um, Harry Hawkins shared with me that they could work with school district partners to customize the work and bring it into the school district. And so that led to a series of conversations over the spring uh, and eventually to a proposal, which you know we'll look at in a little bit here, uh, that our board accepted over the summer, uh, which would be funded through uh, parts of our federal budget uh, that we have to allocate uh, towards uh, reducing our gaps, reducing our disproportionalities. And so the goal is to create a district-wide approach uh, to teaching an equitable version of American and world history. Uh, it is to impart our educators with tools to instruct, interact, and care for students of diverse backgrounds and work with us on creating processes and systems to begin engaging social justice topics with staff, students, and parents. Uh, uh, the opportunity, Nehemiah has a lot of experience in this area. Uh, so the first part, we'll see this again later in the deck, are uh, a needs assessment. Uh, they will be working with a group of our educators over the course of the year. Uh, so that will uh, be a chance for us to have some important conversations about taking a broader lens to how we view history and also look at highlights and obstacles uh, in the area of achieving our district goals. And so as part of the package that they have proposed and we've accepted, uh, there is professional development, uh, training specifically in the social studies area. Uh, there will be some study groups and there is also going to be, on a virtual basis, access to a cross-cultural coaching platform uh, that Nehemiah has rights to. Uh, so again, you know, the rationale here, uh, there's really two rationales that are complementary for the project. The first is the why. And um, there is uh, a model for looking at multicultural education uh, from a thought leader named Banks, uh, and it, it contains multiple levels. And I think, you know, we do have some limited exceptions to it, but consistently, if you were to look at how we approach uh, our curriculum, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of strengths to our curriculum in the district, but I think when we look at it from a multicultural perspective, uh, we pretty consistently uh, should self-assess ourselves in the lowest tier of the banks model. It is definitely uh, a great opportunity for us to move forward as a district. And when we've had feedback from our students over the years, whether it's been um, on surveys, whether it's been linkage meetings with the Board of Education, times I've gone in to meet with the Justice League or the Black Student Union, uh, two things that have often come up are the need to look at our courses and in particular social studies, both to uh, modernize and make more inclusive the United States and world history all students get as part of our American history courses and our world history courses and the courses in elementary, intermediate, middle school that lead into that, but also down the road potentially some elective courses as well. So that's, that's the demand side for this. And what Nehemiah supplies to us is uh, an external partner who has a lot of experience and expertise in this area. Uh, they're already running this African-American course, which is very well regarded. And they're a local external partner. They're, they're based here in Dane County. So uh, 
we feel this is a real need and we feel Nehemiah is a great partner for us in this work. So what's the project approach? So there will be a needs assessment at the beginning and uh, there's kind of an internal team of myself, uh, Jackson Gabriel, our social studies department chair, uh, and Eric Hootenberg, one of our high school associate principals who is uh, the, the site administration representative to our small planning body. We're going to meet with some Nehemiah representatives in early November to chart this out in more detail and begin to put some timelines in place. But we're going to start with a needs assessment. And that will be a needs assessment both with staff and students and potentially uh, parents and community members as well. But that's something we'll be discussing with our Nehemiah colleagues uh, here in a few weeks. The professional development focus will be customized after the needs assessment process, but uh, these are our five examples uh, that in the initial planning phase we surfaced. And again, we'll modulate this a little more once we've conducted our needs assessment. Uh, we'll also look at possible study group topics for teachers and administration in the district. Uh, we'll be reviewing uh, some important texts. Uh, and then again, take a deeper dive into topics like white privilege and how it manifests itself uh, in the Wanakee community. So timeline, um, one of the reasons why uh, one of the big things we have to talk about when we meet with Nehemiah in two weeks is what is the timeline? Because um, when we were doing our planning in the spring, we knew we had a lot of uncertainty about how much of this work could occur in person, which I think would be everybody's preferred format for the work, and how much of this might have to happen through video conferencing or other means, which is uh, the current reality for so many of us in different parts of our life. Uh, and here we are a few months later and that uncertainty is still with us. So we're going to have to make some decisions based on our current reality about how much of this will be in person, if any, and how much of this will be delivered virtually. Uh, we anticipate the needs assessment process will take about one month. Then we will have uh, professional development sessions uh, and we'll be working on uh, a release schedule for teachers. Uh, I think we have from a calendar standpoint a lot of flexibility in how we release staff for this work this year. The one thing we are going to have to be sensitive to in developing our professional development schedule is that uh, this is not a normal year for our teachers. Uh, everything is more than a little bit new for them, uh, you know, to a person. And I know we have, you know, some teachers in our group. Uh, a common refrain I hear is that even from our uh, some of our veteran teachers, they feel just like they're a new teacher again, and they're just trying to keep up. So we have a lot of flexibility, but in terms of how close we pack these together, we're going to have to have some conversations with the teachers we intend to involve in this about how quickly we want to pace it out, given everything they're working with, with instructing in the new environment and their increased planning needs. Uh, we'll also have Aside from the PD, we'll have some study groups that'll, that Nehemiah will be facilitating, and we'll be looking to get those up and running as well. And uh, that's kind of the overall timeline and components for the Nehemiah project. Uh, I just kind of want to bring this uh, back to where we started. This is not the only thing we have going on in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space in terms of existing projects. Uh, the administrative team is working with CISA2 and the Wisconsin RTI Center on our root cause analysis strategies uh, to better implement our disproportionality plan. Uh, we had Percy Brown, the uh, Director of Student Achievement and Equity for the Middleton Cross Plains District, come in to work with our teachers in August the last two years. Uh, and we may continue to engage Percy uh, and other uh, resources in this area. We continue to work with our student affinity groups and you know, doing our best to elevate and honor the student voice in this work. Uh, the district will continue to participate in the Dane County Equity Consortium. Uh, we have ongoing local professional development workshops. Uh, we are working on curriculum and instructional materials renewal. I think this Nehemiah project is gonna be an important major building block in that 
and it won't be solely focused on uh, on the African American experience in world and United States history. Uh, it'll be broader than that, but by the same token, in talking with Madison Metropolitan and Verona in particular, there may be some other resources uh, that we can draw upon to kind of build on this initial start you know, with Nehemiah. And then of course we have this committee uh, that the board has constituted. So that's kind of uh, what I pulled together in response to Sam's question. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and open it up for Q&A. And I guess, you know, I'm gonna start with a question to Sam. Uh, does that kind of hit the topics that you have questions about, Sam? Yeah, it did, yeah. Okay. You know, I think something that I would be interested, in, and I know, kind of looking at at the Hollywood squares, you know, there's at least one of you that just by, by your teaching assignment, I know is gonna be actively involved in this work. And that would be Gina, uh, because Gina, for those of you who don't know, is, an L, is our elementary world language coordinator. And at the elementary level, we deliver and integrate a lot of our social studies content through our elementary world language uh, program. So elementary world language will be part of this along with our social studies team. Uh, but I mean, this is certainly something where as we go through this over the life of the project and the life of this committee, if you want updates on this from time to time, that's certainly something uh, we could accommodate. I don't think given the pace of the work, a, in an update every time we meet is really um, going to provide a lot of news, but perhaps every two or three times we meet, uh, Gina and I could update you on our progress. Any any questions or reactions to what you've seen? Melissa, I see your hand up. Yes, I'm sorry. I The reactions, I don't really have a hand. I just have like a clapping button. I'm usually not, you know, I don't, I don't understand the reactions as well as I receive them, I guess. Um, my wondering is um, about the elementary. Um, the curriculum like the literacy curriculum and how long that's been there um what is going on um like with the root cause analysis is it starting in the elementary level and kind of um is it is it looking at the curriculum or is it just looking at like the you know intervention materials that's that's a great question melissa and I would say we keep working on our on our root cause analysis and our disproportionality plan and thinking about who's in here. Katie has been part of all of these trainings as well. But when we did our initial cut of the root cause analysis, uh, our our thinking was that curriculum may play a role, but a lot of it is instructional practices. And you know, I will admit. This is an educational buzzword, but some of you have heard it. it kind of our, if we had to kind of put it on one big theme, I think our, our thinking is we are not as culturally responsive in our practices in many ways as we should be. So it's partly the curriculum, it's partly uh, classroom environment, it's partly how we engage uh, all of our families and all of our students. Uh, so curriculum is, is part of what we are looking at, Melissa, but it's just the more, um, you know, broader bucket of culturally responsive practices. We see that as a really developmental, developmental area for us. So you have, do you have a specific question about one part of the curriculum? I mean, in a nutshell, our disp the disproportionality is looking specifically at why uh, African-American students are three times as likely to be identified for special education as white students in our district. That's, that is what's triggered the disproportionality finding. And so we're very focused on that particular question. We think that question has implications 
for other groups where we see disproportionalities that don't rise to the level of identification, particularly um, with uh, Hispanic students, but that's really where the focus is. And, and Melissa, I saw your hand up. Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, our school, this has been something that I've been really looking into a lot. Um, and there is a lot of research um, out there about curriculums, balanced, balanced literacy, structured literacy, um, and a lot of the information that's coming out is saying that balanced literacy, which is somewhat of a, hmm, it's, you know, showing kids the way, but not exactly explicitly teaching them um, phonics in a systematic way, um, that that is really Im impacting our students of color in a negative way. And so that is one of our equity strategies in my building is that we are changing our practices to making sure that kids aren't just sort of hopefully understanding how to read, that we are explic explicitly checking um, and making sure that they do. Um, they, the CESA just came out with a um, about foundational skills. It's called the first, and it's a way that you can sort of look through your curriculum and make sure that it is hitting those important pieces. Um, I mean, there's I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of new information out there about how to teach reading that a lot of a lot of schools really didn't know about, a lot of teachers didn't know about. Um, and another big piece, I I might be wrong, but I thought that um, you guys do use Lucy Calkins. She has recently come out and said her curriculum isn't covering everything that it needs to. And she's acknowledged that this is the case. So um, I don't know, just some things to think about. I see five Zoom hands up, and one of them is Allison, who is a lit coach, an instructional coach for us at the elementary level. So, Allison, I'll let you go first, and then um, Leslie, Pam, Mel, and Christy. So, you're up, Allison. Okay. Um, thank you, Melissa, for bringing those things up, because those are definitely things that are um, I guess in my world right now too, with things I've been listening to and watching. Um, I've been participating in the webinars through um, DPI about foundational skills. So I know, and we just had a coach call this past week with Amy Johnson, our curriculum director now for K-6. And we're looking at the first tool, which is to take a look at our instructional practices with phonemic awareness and phonics. We have Fontes and Pinnell, or yeah, Fontes and Pinnell um, word study in phonics in K through three right now. Um, but I know we're looking, we were supposed to pilot different phonics materials last year in the spring, but with COVID that was put on hold. Um, so it's definitely on our radar and knowing that we want something more systematic and explicit with the phonics piece. So I hope that helps. <laughs> and we don't have Lucy Calkins. Um, we, you, most of our materials are from the Center for the Collaborative Classroom. So we have Making Meaning and Being a Writer for our writing curriculum. And the good thing with those, um, they're very purposeful with the mentor texts that are used. Um, just a variety of backgrounds and cultures are represented in the mentor text. And so that's a big piece too with that, the philosophy, with, philosophy of those programs. And also one other thing, I know all three elementary schools last year did work with their staffs to do kind of audits on their personal libraries in the classrooms to see the variety of texts that are available and to look at what we could do differently and add to our collections, kind of to represent the variety of backgrounds that we have in our classes. Thank you for all of that, Allison. And of course, you know, curricular review, what, what you had tonight as part of that slide deck was very targeted. And I know that's something that the board has said could be part of this going forward. So we might do a deeper dive in this later later down the road. Leslie, you're next and then Pam. Okay, yes, I, I'm gonna take, a, I'm gonna go in a different direction, but before I um, 
share what's on my mind, Tim. I do want to ask the effort that's being put forth with the Nehemiah organization, is that specifically and only for um, instructional? So the, the professional development and the study groups, I think, mm -hmm. are intended to be primarily for instructional. Uh, yeah. To help build professional to help staff. Build curriculum. Yes. To help build now, curriculum. Now the study groups, I mean, if there's an interest in, in committee members participating in some of that, that certainly, you know, Nehemiah said they could be flexible with that. I think the needs oh. assessment is going to be broader than just professional staff. Okay, so the reason why I asked, because I was a bit confused, because you were talking about a needs assessment, and then you're talking about, is it a needs assessment focused on curriculum, or is it a needs assessment focused on the school district itself? And the reason why I ask is because um, if you're going to focus in on the curriculum, I think that that's a very good start, but there is a bigger sort of concern that I would think that the school district would would have in mind and would understand. And that would be the institutional racism. It's really how systematically we we operate. It's, you know, how does this affect students socially? I realize, you know, looking at the data was quite sobering the last time we met related to African American students. But one particular element of that is what type, of, what type of support or what type of socialization are students getting, these, these Black students are getting that, they, that would help them have a sense of confidence, that would help them have a sense of identity and belonging? What is it? And it's not just going to happen through an organization or through a group. So it goes beyond just the curriculum itself. What type of hiring practices are in place that will that will create an environment where black students can see more black teachers or administrators that they can have someone that they can relate to. So that's why I'm asking, are these efforts specifically towards cre you know, adapting and adjusting curriculum or are we looking at this on a much more holistic basis that will also include the curriculum as well as the policies, as well as the operations, as well as socializations within that. And I know that I kind of laid a lot out there for you, but I see a lot of effort that's being put into place. And what I like to see is whatever that outcome is, changes and accountability is made. Thank you. So, so Leslie, I can't, I can't give you a final answer on that because there's there's we, we've got a broad outline of agreement on what the project's going to include, but I don't have all of the details. I don't see what Nehemiah is doing as being a substitute for the work of the committee or the audit that we have talked about and we have a subcommittee working on. Uh, however, in our initial planning discussions with Nehemiah, they have said that needs assessment and some of the work with um, our team is not be before we get to more narrowly technical issues of how do we have a more inclusive and representative curriculum in terms of resources and instructional targets and all of that there's a lot of work they feel needs to be engaged in on those structural issues before a team can really get into the more technical social studies issues but i don't think it's going to be as encompassing as as what you talked about that's that's beyond the scope of this so it's it's going to be a bit of a wider lens, but it's not going to be the whole 360, I don't think. But I can let you know after we've had this initial meeting, the next planning meeting with them. Yes, and I also understand that Rome was not built in a day as well. But I want but, to make But it sure. needs to get built. I know, right. But I, I, I just want us to um, just be mindful okay. of, you know, this beyond the curriculum, which is very important. Thank you. So Pam, you're next, and then Mel. Uh, yeah, um, uh, my question kind of is very much related to what Leslie just brought up. And um, I think that the uh, 
um, at our committee uh, as representatives of the community have some other perspectives that might be missed um, if Nehemiah is only working with administrators and, and, and uh, administrators and teachers. And I'm wondering if our committee can uh, could meet with them, could have some kind of uh, interaction with them. Um, the other question uh, builds on on, on, Le on Leslie's second point even more, and that is that um, Nehemiah Project is 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 the is a very important place to start, but the systemic problems um, go beyond um, the uh, the um, uh, African American understanding of African American history and embrace other aspects of American history that have led to. Uh, our problems of, in, of inclusion and exclusion um, that go beyond the African American experience. Um, so again, Rome wasn't built in a day, and I think this is an important place to start. But again, let's also be mindful of the other things that some of our kids are experiencing by feeling excluded for a variety of other reasons. Thank you, Pam. Mel, you're next. And then, Christy, you had your hand raised. I'm just going to assume it's still up. So it's Mel, Christy, then Laura. So um, I actually lowered my hand because Leslie's question was my exact question as well. And I just wanted to make sure that if there were assessments being done by other groups, whether the audit was needed or not needed, but I appreciated Pam reminding us of who's represented on those other assessments and whether it's a comprehensive view or not. So the two women before me asked the questions that I had, so I'm good. Okay, very good. Christy. Uh, same with me, Tim. I'm, I'm good to go. Okay, Laura. Thank you. I don't know why my hand button isn't working either. Um, Leslie's comments really struck me, whoops, I almost fell backwards, um, because I read an article, and this is something that's been on my mind recently, um, moving from um, teaching in a really diverse um, district in Madison and then moving to um, Wanakee, it's been an interesting switch um, in that um, it, we've talked about how it's pretty homogenous. And I read an article that said, teaching people to be anti-racist is not enough if we're not in an environment to practice that. And so for me, we can do everything we want with curriculum and instruction, but if we aren't looking at blending our environments to greater diversity, how will people ever feel that we're not living in a bubble different from the rest of the world? That doesn't just mean students that are um, people of color, but that means that how do we teach um, the richness of that diversity and the benefit of that to white people if they can't live within it and see it. Thank you, Laura. Katie, you had your hand up and Gina, you have your hand up. So Katie, then Gina. So the direction just went a little way from where I was commenting. I was gonna just address something of Melissa um, and then maybe Leslie, in the math side, we were also doing a curriculum review of everyday math at the K-4 uh, level, uh, but with COVID, that again was put on hold. One of our indicators within that curriculum was the diversity and meeting the needs of students and especially looking at the disproportionality. So that was on our front burner. Um, in once we kind of get through this emergency of teaching, teaching in the new environment that we're like put in in this everyday crisis right now, I, I know that that will be put back on the burner as work that we need to do. Um, and Leslie, talking about some of the social emotional needs, uh, the board did approve developmental designs, um, which we are working on implementing within our SEL work, which is social emotional learning. Um, and at the center of that work is equity. And that's why we chose that program. And really that's about building relationships among staff and students um, and students to students. Um, and that's a K-12 framework. Um, so it's not really a curriculum, but it's a framework of how you um, guide the way you interact and some cultural responsive practices along with that. Um, it is it was just introduced to staff at the beginning of the school year. We had a um, a group of staff get trained over the summer. Um, so there's a social emotional learning committee. I will use SEL that is defining how we um, 
do continued professional development staff, how we're going to implement it and roll that out over that continued learning. I mean, developmental design recommends a years of a process to be in full implementation um, of that. Uh, so that is some work of the social connectedness and ensuring that we have all people feel included within our buildings and welcomed um, and learning about each other's cultures um, and the way we function as a community. So those are two pieces that are in the process as well. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, yeah. Katie. Gina. Um, I first just wanted to say that I'm excited about this partnership with Nehemiah. I had an opportunity to participate in a training this summer that was um, through WEAC, but it was also with Nehemiah um, called Hidden Barriers in Education. And some other um, members of our staff participated as well. And I, that just made me more excited to be partnering with them. Um, so I just wanted to share that. And then additionally, um, I think I think because this presentation was about the curriculum, that is kind of what we heard about. And I hope that we can kind of blend this agenda item with the upcoming one, which focuses on um, those audit options that we've been taking a look into, because I think that um, that has that wider lens to it. Um, and I would really love to hear more from the um, families and community members on the team um, as we move forward into that work, because I think, you know, we heard um, Joel said at the last meeting, we just want to make sure we don't get bogged down with these assessments of where we're at and forget what's like on fire in front of us right now. Um, and so I, I hope that uh, perhaps if, if the work that Tim is doing with um, administration and hopefully we'll hear more as staff um, focuses on curriculum, then perhaps this other aspect of the audit can focus on things beyond curriculum so that we can be working in, in both of these realms at the same time. Um, and then finally, Tim, I would just encourage you to share with all of the social studies um, folks that this is coming, because I'm not sure that everyone, you know, knows yet about this partnership because not everybody follows the school board quite like I do. So I think people are really excited about lots of progress that's happening in this area. And that would just be another thing that would remind people that we're headed in the right direction. So thank you. Thank you, Gina. Monique, I see your hand up. Thank you. So, um, Regina, I kind of tagging on to what you're saying about, you know, there's a lot of talk and it's very much on fire. And today we had a Sonia Doris meeting, which is our Latinx population. And the students will tell you that they know they stand out. I mean, if you're speaking about a black student or a Latina student, they know they're standing out and we need to show them that we're supporting them and that we see them and that we respect them. But they're also very hesitant to be seen as what well, we're going to ask this student about this thing. They don't want to be representative of a certain group because they're so diverse. I mean, when we start to really learn students backgrounds, it's not as simple as we think. I mean, and that's true for all of our students, but especially for any of our students of color. Um, so it's a really delicate balance. And I think that we have to really include students. I haven't heard too much about the inclusion of students in some of this. And we've got some great affinity groups and some great groups within our school that are working towards different social justice issues. And I would just encourage to have, you know, some students involved in this process because they're the ones that are going to be affected by what we're teaching, what they're learning in school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great, great observation, Monique. And in keeping with being inclusive of our student voice, Isabella. Mm -hmm. Hi, um, 
I am part of the Black Student Union and like being a senior, like I always wanted to know more about like where I came from because I don't live with my dad, I live with my mom. My mom's white. So I never really understood, like got my full like cultural background and like being part of like BSU too, which was like all of all the black students, we always talk about how we wish we got more than just Rosa Parks, more than Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr. Like we need more than just that. And I think like this is like an amazing like thing that's going to be happening, but I just thought it like happened sooner again, like the whole like Rome thing, but I just wish that like I was able to like, as like a kid, not just learn about um, Martin Luther King Jr. or just like, or having walking down like the whole like walking down the hallway and like coming out of BSU and everyone looks at you type vibe. Like I just feel like there's like so much that we can do too and like i love like everything that we've been doing so far so yeah thank you isabella and, and we will be sure as part of that needs assessment process that nehemiah is going to do uh is you know we definitely will be including our students in that i think the other thing and i know that um you know that the Christy and Monique have been working on this. And I, and I think Isabella, um, did Mr. Murphy bring up that we're looking for some student representatives to that national equity project team? Yeah, um, I think I'm gonna be part of that. I have to talk to him about that. Okay, that, that'd be fabulous. So we, we, you know, I think on the one hand, we wanna really engage our kids. I do think that as adults, we have to be sensitive to um, engaging our students at the center without over relying on our students to do the work that we as adults need to do. So, um, it, so I think I think that's always going to be our our balance. And I think involving in this committee, I think, is a great step in this direction. Involving more of uh, the adults in our community is, is really important. And that's something we haven't done well as a district over the years on these topics. And um, hopefully this is something that's going to lead us in a, in a more inclusive direction. Great, great conversation. And, you know, we may need to think about bringing back some of these curricular topics, but I think, you know, one big takeaway I've, I've had is that, wow, we, um, we really need to look at the 360 and the audit piece. And, and the next item on our agenda is the consideration of methods for collecting data and information to inform the work of the ad hoc committee. And so we have, uh, this is I think in part a follow-up on the presentation Nia and I provided last meeting, but we also have a subgroup that's been very active looking at the concept of the equity audit. And so as we look at this next item, uh, I look at this as kind of broad for, for the benefit of our work as a committee. What do we think are our next steps uh, in terms of making sure we have lots of different types of information, both for ourselves, the district and the community to help support our work in this area. And I don't know if the, the ad, who, who in here, raise your, raise your hand physically, who in here is on the audit subgroup? And so have you had some conversations or any work time since our last? I see nods. So um, I don't know if you were prepared to speak about your conversations, but if you are, oh, and, and Bethany dropped a link into the chat. So uh, maybe as a springboard into the topic, a quick update from that that group in your conversations, and then we'll open the floor up. Yeah, um, so our team has met um, and we did some individual work and then we met again, and we would plan on meeting an additional time before this broad committee meets again, but Basically, we found five audit tools that we already had in our possession from like a training or something like that, that we then created the annotated big bibliography for. 
And then we kind of did a quick assessment of what are the strengths of this audit or tool? What are the weaknesses? And then any other general comments about it. Um, based off of um, our analysis of those strengths and weaknesses, we narrowed the tools down to two. And then as we're starting the conversation within our subcommittee, um, we're, we seem to be leaning towards one and we really wanted to kind of talk about what we're leaning towards, but also um, offer up the opportunity for feedback and for time for the uh, other committee members to look at this tool with a different viewpoint. Um, the, the people who are on the subcommittee are all educators of some sort, and we all are elementary focused as well. So we have a, a narrowed viewpoint, so getting a broader perspective would be important. Um, the document that Bethany shared is just a side by side of the two tools that we narrowed it down to. One is this LEAD tool, which is an acronym, and one is the NEA tool, which is an additional acronym, um, which I think we explained a little further in there. Um, basically, both are like a rubric style um, measurement tool with some differences in their measurements. So like the NEA has um, item by item where you rate on a continuum and the continuum is a little bit more uh, flexible with some more gray areas versus the lead tool is a little bit more like looking at um, four different viewpoints, multiple points within each one before you rate yourself. So it's a slightly different process and a slightly different um, conclusion that you make but both require like a comprehensive team to, to look at it, potentially divide and conquer. Both are free tools um, with additional uh, website supports and stuff like that. Um, the other hesitation that we started recognizing was with the lead tool is that some of the links seem a little old and we're a little worried about um, whether the things that they offer on that website are actually still in existence right now. So I think we're, again, that's another reason we're considering this NEA tool. Um, as you're looking through the comparison, you'll see that the NEA tool really doesn't have a lot of weaknesses. The, really the thing that we saw was that it could get lengthy, but the nice thing about it is there are seven components that you're rating, and then there's multiple factors under each component we could take on all seven or we could take on some of the seven. And so when I hear things like with Nehemiah looking at some curriculum instruction piece, well, maybe that would be one of the components we take out of this audit, knowing that it's gonna be looked at in a different way. And then we can look at some of the other pieces. So for example, some of the other pieces on the NEA are like school readiness. So even before kids enter our buildings, what are some of those preschool and access things in our community prior to the school and stuff like that. Um, then it's getting into the curriculum piece. It gets into the actual school culture and environment. It gets at um, whether um, people are, are accessing things equitably. It gets at actual performance and achievement outcomes. And then it gets into engagement and funding. So it seems relatively comprehensive. And some of the concerns that I heard like Leslie and Pam bring up, um, this seems like it extends beyond that curriculum and instruction needs assessment a little bit further to hopefully get that broader sense. Committee members, any other things that you wanna add? No, thank you so much, Mel. Well, thank you very much for your work. Group, do we have questions or comments on what we've we've seen so far? I know we're just seeing this for the first time. Um, I don't think we're gonna make a decision tonight on which of the two audit tools, but do we have any clarifying questions or reactions? I don't know how to read order, but I see that Pam's hand is up. Yeah, so we've got three hands. We have Diane and Christy and Pam. So I was thinking Pam, Diane, and Christy would be our order. And go ahead, Pam. 
Okay, um, thank you very much for all your work on this. This is really, really important and very much appreciated. Um, I'm just wondering, um, just looking at the NEA tool specifically, because that seems to be the one that's more reliable and stable, how customizable is it for really focusing on the issues that we're interested in, on equity and, and inclusion? Um, well, like I kind of said, there are seven components and we could choose to do you know, any number of those components. So for example, if we wanted to park curriculum instruction, maybe we would focus on just the six components, or maybe there are two that we want to prioritize as a committee. Um, and then depending on time, we could get to the other ones. Um, and then the other benefit of this one with the customizableness is that again, under those components, there's all these different prompts that you rate individually on a continuum. So even within the components, you know, if some of those things aren't applicable, we could kind of move forward and customize it more quickly. Um, and I think for that exact reason, we can uh, plan and prioritize a little bit better for like very specific goals mm -hmm. because of how divided and detailed it, it, it has. Okay. Diane and then Christy. Thanks. And, um, and I echo that uh, it was a lot of work to put all this together and, uh, and just reviewing it was a lot. So having your pros and cons and, and that listing was really helpful. And um, I like the idea of going through some of the tools that you thought um, are most useful and, and maybe that's a homework for us all um, to think about what, you know, we would think a priority area would be. Um, it strikes me, you know, like the lead tool um, is sort of framed in a, a leadership uh, format of, you know, our leaders do this, whereas the um, NEA tool seems a little bit more broad based. Yet I noticed that there were some things, you know, I kind of felt it might be something where we can pull ideas from um, a, a multiple tools to really get at uh, the specific questions that we have or, or the you know areas of focus that we'd like to to um, work on and um, and then I also noticed in the comment I think it was in the table that you created something about you know there was a very long um, cultural climate survey set of surveys that you found and that maybe some of that data already existed. And um, one thing that struck me is that, you know, it's hard sometimes to answer all of these questions if we don't really know what broad groups of people are thinking. Mm -hmm. And and so it, that might be something where we need to, at the same time to, to get some information in a survey format or um, even if, you know, we, it's maybe not all the items in the survey, but we look at some of the surveys and we can pick some of the items um, that struck me that that might be important. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good observation because we like the school climate survey, but it only got, it wasn't as comprehensive, but it could be a piece that informs a more comprehensive audit if we felt like that was helpful. Mm -hmm. Great conversation. Christy, you're next. Um, I was just curious if you guys came across any other schools who used the audits, um, like even in our region, like if we contact at CISA or somebody like that, were there other schools who've done this? Um, I can speak to that. Uh, so I serve on an equity committee at the I guess, regional level within WEAC um, and also have ties throughout the state um, to people who have gone to the specific NEA training that I did not get to go to this summer because of COVID. Um, and they have done it. Um, everybody who went to the training had to like go through the process as an individual. Um, and I have just recently put out some feelers um, to statewide contacts about who has fully used this tool. Um, and I'm hoping to hear back 
soon so that we can use them as um, reference to what worked well and what did not. Um, additionally, I could reach out um, at the state leadership level and see if they know of people um, beyond what who I might have contact with. So I will follow up on that for next meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other initial reactions to the great work that our uh, subgroup on the audit has done? Yeah, so yeah, is, so oh, go, ahead, go ahead, Laura. Yeah, my hand wasn't working. More of a clarifying question. Um, once we use this tool, the purpose of this tool then, this is a question, is to then inform other people to do this work, correct? Like, so that the data that we get and we analyze it, whether we do all of those components of it or just pick a couple, the goal of that is to get that information to pass along to other people. I, I, think, I think for us and then for the district as an institution, and then I think our community at large, Laura. And I think just in reference to like the charge of this community, it's largely this like, get background and pass it on to the school board. Um, but we have talked a little bit too about how, you know, as educators in the district, we obviously can take on <laughs> challenges of our own um, as you've been doing already. Um, so, so certainly we could, you know, we don't have to sit and wait around for someone to tell us to, to make some progress. So I, I think both of those are probably true. Great, thank you. Uh, and Page 19 of the of the PDF that's linked in there in there um, has like a, a next step next steps outline that um, gives some direction for that. Um, I kind of look at this like an assessment that I would give my kids that would kind of inform, OK, now do I need to go talk to a specialist or, you know, do I kind of just know based on this assessment what I need to do? So I think, um, you know, the that uh, there are some built-in next steps in the um, in the tool, but then it might also lead us to be like, oh, we need to do some work in with this. And you know, it's really helpful, Bethany, for you to put that document in the chat. But uh, for everybody, if you had not noticed this, uh, we have a folder on the equity audit, and this is called, I think, the the tool side by side or the audit side by side. So this is also in our shared folder. So when we do come away from our meeting tonight, if you want to go look at this on your pace in more depth, that's in our shared folder. And Leslie, I see your hand is up. Yes, I, I'm sorry, I had technical issues. So I didn't even have a chance to open up the document. So I really can't comment on it. The little that I heard, I think is, is very interesting. So I will have to take a look at this, but Who's on the committee again, the subcommittee again? I know I, I I heard enough that it was all educators on the committee, on the subcommittee, is that correct? Yeah, so it's myself who's an elementary school psychologist. It's Gina who's an elementary world language teacher, Bethany who's a first grade teacher, and then it's Kathy Cattell who's one of the elementary paraprofessionals for regular education. So, and I guess I would just scenarios. verify that this subcommittee was to kind of just explore the tools. We certainly don't see ourselves as the people who will be running the audit. I hope oh, yeah. that we have a larger, larger group involved in that process. So. Yeah, good point. Thank you, Gina. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so this was just an exploratory group. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. To kind of narrow down all the tools that exist that are called equity audits, I guess. Um, my imagining, perhaps, with some of the things I was reading about the NEA, is that they, they do suggest to have a broad team that's comprehensive, you know, educators, students, um, different levels, and then community parent involvement, and then kind of divide and conquer. So I was in my head thinking, well, maybe we would have you know, subcommittees take on different components. And then within each subcommittee, we, you know, we have a student rep, we have a parent or community rep, we have an educator elementary or primary, and we have an educator secondary, something like that. Or we could do it all together as well. 
And if anybody else would like to join us as we kind of deep dive and make sure that this is the tool that we want to really recommend and um, suggest that we move forward with, um, please feel free to, free to join us. We have delightful meetings. <laughs> so so my, my suggestion would be that you all have done some very nice work with, with first of all, doing the investigation, the side-by-side -side tool. It's probably great homework for all of us to look at that before the next meeting. But when you have your next meeting come up, if you could maybe email the group uh, just to make us aware, so anybody who had an interest and in could drop in, that might be a suggestion I would make. And Mike, I see your hand up and Gina, I see yours. So we'll go to Mike and then Gina. And mine was just that I'd be very interested in helping with that equity audit group if there was any desire for additional folks. Uh, downside is I bring an elementary perspective because I'm an elementary principal in another district. So don't help a ton there, but have a little bit of community perspective as well. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Gina. Um, yeah, I was like, do I raise my hand? I don't. So this is a question for you, Tim, and not in my like capacity of presenting as a committee member. Um, I was wondering if you might broach the topic with Nehemiah about um, their interest or ability or contacts of who might be willing to help guide us. Um, one of the things that we came up with in our discussions um, was about like what kind of resources come with it and what kind of um, the process looks like. And one of the things we discussed quite a bit was the need to not bias our our work just from the inside. And so we were we were hoping to have um, some outside perspective or guidance or leadership and and perhaps we can access that through NEA. Um, but there may be value in having an existing relationship with um, somebody more local that could help us with this. So just to have that on your radar that we're also hoping that that we have, you know, some external guidance during this and maybe that's Nehemiah, maybe that's Percy, maybe that's someone that I don't know. So thank you. That's a, that's a great idea, Gina, because I do think there's, um, I'm excited we're doing this or intend to do it. Um, and I think there are going to be models that'll help us with the what, but I think the, the how is important because I think we have always struggled as a system to involve everybody, everybody. And so I think it's, it doesn't do us a lot of good to do an equity audit and then not cast an inclusive net for input. Uh, and then just how to look at it because uh, all of us are members of our community um, and potentially the outside lens. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll check on that. Um, that's very good. And, and Mel, I see you put in the chat, the uh, RTI Center is just proportionality network and we do work with CISA2, with an RTI center person. And Laura, I saw your suggestion that we should maybe talk to one of our external net partners too, National Equity Project partners. Um, I can't help myself from an acronym. It's, it's a big failing. Um, so yeah, we, we've got some additional folks we can talk to and see if they can give that perspective. Mike, your hand is still up. Does, is, do you wanna speak? My hand is still up because I'm a very ineffective Zoom user. Sorry about that, Tim. No, that's okay. I, I just want, I, I'm trying to make sure I include everybody. And, you know, almost everybody's had a chance to contribute at some point uh, in this conversation, but not everybody has. And at points, our conversation has really rolled along. So I just want to kind of pause and give us maybe 30 seconds as a team for some reflection on everything that's been shared. And then I would invite some of the folks who haven't had a chance to participate yet to consider if you want to just, um, you know, share some perspective on the topics we've talked about before we move on to our next topic. So 30 seconds of downtime.
Okay, I think that's close to a 30 second pause. Um, so is there anybody else who, while we're uh, on the topic of kind of the audit and the data gathering, who wants to ask a question, share some perspectives, bring up a request for the immediate future? Nia, I see your hand. Yes, so I've been listening in. Um, I haven't had much to say, but I um, wanted to just say one, I really appreciate the work that's been done for just the first round of analysis for um, the audits. And then also your um, presentation, Tim, again, reiterating uh, the issues that we have here in Wanakee. I, um, because I left a little earlier last meeting, I um, am again a little curious. So the team has decided to go ahead and do an audit of the Wanda Key Schools. It's just background for myself. I'm assuming we're going to send these out to the individual schools and get an idea of where people are at. And I want to make sure I understood that. Yeah, so at the last meeting, Mom. we did have some conversation, Nia, after you left about the audit. And it was uh, the audit subgroup had done some work and kind of the, the discussion was go ahead and, and, and meet some additional to try to frame things up a little bit more. And I think in principle, we wanted to do the audit. And I think I remember from that meeting, one of the things Mike was talking about, especially in terms of bringing in somebody to help us with it was, you know, there'd be benefits for bringing in an external resource and depending, uh, depending on the cost, that might be more easily green lighted than, than others. So I don't think we made a, a firm, I think we've got a general consensus in, in concept to do an audit. That's kind of my read of our discussions, but the scope, the model, do we contract with somebody? I think that's still very much for us to discuss as a team. Ah, okay, sounds good. That's that's uh, the background I need, thank you. But I'm going by my, recollection of that discussion and that was three weeks ago now so does Gina I saw your hand yeah I was just gonna um I, I think that does represent kind of where we're at and and no nothing has been um determined even that we're doing an audit this was still just kind of exploring our options um but I do have a question about moving forward so our our plan was to meet again to take a deeper look at this and ensure that the tool that we're leaning towards is the one that we would like to recommend. Um, can you speak at all to what the process would be? Would our committee then uh, vote to ask the school board to approve? Or do we have the ability to just move forward with this? Or can you do you know, or can you speak to that at all? Yeah, so I can speak to that some. Uh, I am at a, you know, from from the seat in that I, which I sit, uh, the committee doesn't have an independent budget. So if we want to do something that requires resources, we're going to have to find a funding source. Now, um, depending on the dollar amount, uh, that may or may not need board approval. That kind of depends on uh, the sum involved. But this is also a, a board committee and it's a high profile project for the board. So even if the, the sum was below what's a mandatory board approval, the board may still want to say in this. Now we have two board members in uh, Brian and Mike who are members of the committee. They had scheduling conflicts tonight, but um, you know, I'm sure they would have some perspective to share just like Mike did last time, but on the committee, there are board members on the committee, but they cannot themselves commit the board. So I think we should think about what we want to do. And my proposal to the group would be come up with a, a concept and then we can have a conversation about what resources might be needed um, get Mike and Brian's temperature in particular about whether they think it'd be best to bring it to the board uh, before we move forward. Uh, that, that would be 
my advice. And I know that was mushy, but that's partly because I, I can't completely speak to that. I, but I, I do think we should go ahead and come up with a recommendation maybe at our next meeting. Because I think I, I personally, I'm just speaking for myself here. We haven't done an audit as a district. And I think an audit would really uh, make a strong contribution to our work because we all have our perspectives. I have my perspective, you know, each of us has our perspectives, but an audit would provide some structure to that. And, and we could go back and make sure we had included everybody. And I think that's something that's very important before we go forward. And Laura, you have raised your hand. I have. And then That's Diane. Good. Yep, a question. Um, if we were to go the route of um, an external person to audit, does anybody on the board here have any experience or knowledge of people that do that? I do not, but just as we talked about maybe checking with some of our external partners, one of the things that I, I have made kind of a a note on my pad here, Laura, is we're not an MSAN yet, but MSAN is very open to us. And I, I would probably reach out to the MSAN office and say of your existing members, I think many of them probably have done equity audits. Who have they worked with? I, I'm sure I could get some information from the MSAN office. Okay. The one thing that comes to mind is if we were going to decide a path, um, just like we got some an overview from the subcommittee here on doing it our own and what tools we might use, it might be good to know what those external audits would hold for us as well so that we know the pros and cons of both approaches. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a good, good suggestion. Diane, I see your hand up. It's your turn. Thanks. Um, I really agree with um, what you said, Tim, and I think it gets a bit to Leslie's comments that to really comprehensively address equity and inclusion and um, diversity, I, this is really getting it added from a, a few different angles. Um, and one thought, and this is just it, me thinking out loud, because I don't know the answer, but um, because there's so many components to it and it's, you know, we would hope for it to be comprehensive. It seems like this could go on a timeline that's, you know, longer than, you know, just within the next six months. I, um, just because it seems like it's quite a lot. And, um, you know, if there are resources to get external services in to do some of it, that's excellent. And if there's not, um, then, you know, that also is just another reason why, um, Maybe we can do some of those things. Maybe an external group is better poised to do some components. So maybe when we're all reviewing it and kind of coming back with, with thoughts for the next, the next discussion, you know, thinking in terms of, well, okay, so there's, there's this um, curriculum change that could be occurring in the social sciences. What elements should we be looking at in, from, in terms of an equity audit to ensure that, um, that that doesn't stand just by itself in one little component, that there's other things that are happening to support student learning. Um, uh, so we get what we intend to get out of a curricular change, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Diane. And I think somewhere in the chat, a ways back, oh, yeah, so it was, um, you know, I think the question has been raised is um, some of us are educators, some of us aren't. Uh, I provided a little bit on the Nehemiah project, but I mean, you know, Isabella and Sam are students, but I think we don't necessarily all have uh, up-to-date information about what currently does the district use and how do we perceive its strengths and weaknesses uh, in terms of being inclusive and representative. So in addition to the audit, at some point it might make sense to say, here's what, here's our current reality too. Um, so, you know, we're at 724, trying to honor everybody's time. I think this has been a, a very informative conversation. And I think where we're at is the sub, the audit subgroup is going to meet again. You're going to 
email all of us when that is. And so if they're interested people whose schedule and interest allow could join that meeting. And I, but I will recommend, do we, no, I, I shouldn't say that. Do we want to recommend to Mike and Joel for our next agenda that we, we have a recommendation on the audit as, as an action item for us as a group? I see some nods. Is there anybody who has a reservation about that? Okay, so- Can you clarify that, what you mean by the recommendation? Does that mean what tool we're going to use or whether we're going to go external or internal? So I think at a minimum, the tool, and I think just in the interests of time, because realistically, by the next time we meet, it's going to be in November, uh, I think I think it would be helpful if we could to have a conversation about whether we're going to have somebody partner with us on the audit. So if we need that to be something the group works on, uh, or we want to have another group just to look at external resources, I think it would be great if we could have some pre-meeting work on that as well, just because um, I think our discussions are great, but I think it would be great to get an audit started as well. But I am talking a lot as a meeting facilitator, which is a bad thing. And I see that Leslie and Nia have their hands up. So Leslie first, then Nia. Oh, my question is really quick. I was wondering, I, I'm having difficulties opening up the document in Google Docs. And I was wondering if we could put it in the board book in a, in a much more centralized location for review. I think that's definitely something we can do, Leslie, is try to, um, to identify meeting artifacts in advance, publish them in board books so they're there in addition to our shared folder. And that's a great suggestion. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Rebecca and we can, well, and Rebecca's on right now, so, so we'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. Nia. Um, Tim, regarding your comment and, and team about just uh, getting an idea of what the district uses for to um, for any type of equity work, I can get that just uh, for informational purposes. So I can get that as a, I'll put that down as a do, to do for myself. But I am, uh, I'd like to move on doing some sort of recommendations so we can get moving. I uh, I agree with that, so mm -hmm. thanks. Thank you, Nia. Okay. Yeah, and, and Diane says that she needed to download and save the documents the double click only took her to the first page. So it may be a browser setting, but I think just as a matter of meeting organization, any, any documents we want to review in the meeting, we really need to try as much as possible to have stage for board book in advance. So I'll, I'll bring that, I, I'm sure Mike and Joel are gonna watch the entire meeting, but I'll, I'll make sure to connect with them both on that as well, so. So we're at 728, our next agenda item is a uh, discussion of events within the Wanakee School District and in the state and nation as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And um, I, I have to confess, I don't know whether this had a, a specific focus or whether, I'm trying to remember our discussion at the last meeting. And I don't know if anybody has particular knowledge of this agenda item. Uh, Rebecca, that would be very helpful. Thank you. So as Joel and Mike were creating the agenda, and I'll back up a little bit and say, yes, I will put out to the whole group what my deadline is for any attachments to board book. That would be awesome. But going to, for right now, I was working with Mike and Joel on this agenda. And Joel asked that this be put on, and then they wordsmithed the item a little bit. And my understanding of what this was supposed to be is just a very short, maybe, discussion right now, but to be put on the agenda again so that you can start thinking about it. Joel really wanted to. Um, know where the committee what the committee was going to do or what the committee was going to stand for if something came up 
what the committee was going to do for maybe some past events or some any future events that would happen that would maybe require um, some um, response response from the committee. Okay, I, th I think I, I think I better under understand the purpose of the item now and its focus. And I thank you very much for that, Rebecca. And that's certainly an important topic for our group um, because I do think, you know, we have a unique charge and, you know, when there are significant events that really attract a lot of discussion, this is certainly a good topic for our group. Um, so my suggestion would be we carry this over to our next meeting along with the audit piece. Um, what is the thought of everybody else? Monique, I see your hand up. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I had mentioned to Mike that the place, which is UW-Madison's professional learning and community education um, outreach, um, have been doing a series of um, symposia called Real Talk, Real Change. Mm -hmm. And there's a link for that in our chat and it's also on the shared drive. On thir next Thursday, the 29th from three to five, the symposia is going to look at racial justice um, centering on school policies, policing and discipline. And I just wanted to let people know that this was happening. They do record their um, symposia. The last two that they did was on leading anti-racist school communities and advancing health equity in the era of COVID-19. So those are also already linked on their site. I believe there will be one more event after this one. It's a four part series. So I just wanted to let people know about it if this was something that they were interested in. Thank you, Monique. And I did, I did attend the previous one. It's really good. And for those of you that are on the NEP team that does overlap completely with our next district team meeting, but as Monique said, they're recorded. So, um, you know what I'll do, Monique, I, I think it's great that it's in the chat. I will add that into an email to the entire committee later tonight, just so everybody gets that, including those who weren't here. Uh, and there's another webinar I'll drop into there as well, but sure. excellent. Anybody else on item seven? Diane. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know if this is the right place or how many people are interested in. Um, some of you may know that there's sort of an informal group um, that kind of assembled on Facebook called Want to Talk Diversity. Yes. And um, Joel and Mike, I, I think both are active in that. And, um, and I have uh, been on some of the pieces, too. And that group, in collaboration with um, WNC, uh, I think uh, she's engaged churches, and I believe uh, Cassandra Punsell is also engaging some schools, um, teachers, um, is organizing a peace walk on November 22nd, and it's uh, coordinated to align with um, the lighting of the rotary lights, uh, though it's uh, sort of uh, not uh, religious faith-based, although there's churches involved. Um, and so um, I, I thought I would just let the group know because I think maybe there has been some outreach to teachers and so if, if um, to work on some um, art projects and, um, and it's intended to uh, be sort of a unifying kind of um, activity to bring people together and motivate people around positive messages of unity. So whatever it's worth, it, um, it's something that will be apparent in the community and maybe it will be talked about. So it's, I guess, good for people to be aware. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice event. Thank you, Diane, for the reminder on that. Um, I know we've had some outreach to our student affinity groups about it. And now that I think the FAQ is up in the shared folder, some of the pieces like the Lantern Project will be getting out more broadly in the next few days. But yeah, it's, it's coming up in November. It, it should be a very nice event in our community. 
Um, for future meetings, that is eight. So as, just as a quick question, has the doodle poll scheduling been working well for us? I see happy faces and nods and thumbs up. So I think, uh, Rebecca, we will um, look in your direction for your assistance again, working with Joel and Mike to organize a doodle poll for our group. Is that something you can help us out with? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get it out before this fall break, so it might be early next week that I get it out. Unless you guys give me any signal that you want it out tomorrow right away. No, but if I could just add that we had talked um, early on about trying to have a more regularly scheduled time as well. So I just want to put that back on the table as it would be helpful for scheduling um, out more than two weeks. So, so one, I'll, I'll just make an observation. We did talk about that, Gina. It seems to me most or all of our meetings have fallen on Tuesday so far. Okay. At, at either either the seven o'clock time or the six o'clock time right? or, or 6.30, somewhere in that zone. So maybe in addition to scheduling the next meeting, we could have a second question on the doodle poll uh, or, or maybe just another place to chime in how people would feel about a standing meeting on, you know, I guess one question would be once a month, every two weeks, We've been meeting, it seems like, on an every three week basis, but maybe we could invite Joel and Mike to work with Rebecca and adding a question on that to go out with the next meeting doodle poll to kind of provide us with more of that future calendaring. So, okay. That and sounds like a good idea. Yeah, any, thank you. Any other hands or comments? So with that, item nine on our agenda is adjournment. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Monique, I motion, I propose we adjourn. Okay. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We stand adjourned at 737. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you everybody for your hard work and openness and dialogue this evening.